Hey friends, Andrew Carruthers here, Education Director for Samvia. Very often we get into a situation where we've taken all this time to create this beautiful fringe and after we blow dry it and after it's refined a little bit, we notice there's just a lot of weight. Especially on a sweeping fringe like this, we tend to get a lot of density building up over here because everything's pushing into that corner. So I want to show you a really simple way to address this density. Now, first and foremost, we really need to think about where the density actually lives. Because a lot of times we get into trouble because we see density and then we come up to the upper surface and we start texturizing the upper surface. In reality, that's actually not where usually the problem is. Usually the problem is kind of from the inside out. So we're going to use a kind of a unique shear for this. This one's called the Invisiblend shear. Um, it's something we developed because we noticed as our shears went dull, they pushed hair. So don't worry, I'm not going to bleed. This is actually not a blade. So what happens is the teeth are the only thing that's sharp. So that dull blade allows the sharp teeth to push the hair forward at it as it's cutting. What that does is instead of straight lines with each teeth, it cuts short to long, creating almost a scalloped effect. And that's why we call it the Invisiblend, because you can actually be quite aggressive with this shear without seeing any lines within your haircut. You can still do this with your traditional blending shear. We just prefer this because of how soft and minimal it takes the hair away. Now we're gonna come in underneath. We're gonna start in this lower section here. And the reason we're gonna do this is because this is usually more so where that weight is the problem and where it comes from. We're gonna come in, we're gonna stay off of this first piece of hair, we're gonna come just behind it and watch how close I'm getting with that Invisiblend. And then as I pull away, you'll notice it's very small amounts of the hair that come out. Now it's okay to be this aggressive with this shear because it's not creating big holes in there. If your blending shear is a little bit more aggressive, we might suggest that you come out away a little bit more just so you don't risk getting a short spot that's gonna pop the hair out. Now let's take another section. We're gonna continue back in sections and kind of sheets because with each section, we're also gonna float out a little farther away from the scalp Again, to protect ourselves, to make sure that we don't get any jumpers as we get closer to the surface. Now, after I've done one or two sections, I wanna come in and just bring everything back together for a moment and check where I'm at. Because a lot of times, guys, you may be surprised after you take a few cuts on that interior, you may have exactly what you want. I'm not quite there yet. You know, This whole thing was cut fairly blunt, so I'm gonna come up with another section. Again, comb it down. I'm gonna bring that polished blade in, stay down below that curve of the head, and then close a couple times as I come through. The other nice thing about that polished blade is after you close, the hair's sitting on the polished blade, so you can slide through quite easily. My old blending shears that I used to have because it was a sharp blade, when I was trying to do this, it would kind of grab on the hair. So again, I'm gonna put that polished blade in. Now watch, I come down and do you see them below that curve that protects me so I don't get the little jumpers. We really believe that when you're addressing these types of issues of density, we really need to be very specific about where we're addressing that density because sometimes we just kind of get into these habits of going back to our favorite texturizing technique and we keep going and going and going and next thing we know, all of this is too wispy or we've kind of destroyed the shape that we've initially put in. So we really, you know, we challenge you to stay very purposeful and also you can always remove more hair if you need to you can't put it back on. So now I'm feeling much better about it. It hugs the shape of her face much better and it still retains the basic shape that I put in through the initial cut. So again, guys, start from the inside out when you're addressing this density. And as you come up, float farther and farther away from that scalp to avoid those little jumpers. We hope this has been a great technique for you guys. I know that it's helped me out a lot in the salon. If you have any questions or comments on it, please leave them in that little box below. 
Thank you so much for watching. I'm Andrew Carruthers, Education Director for Sanvia.